Good morning, Facebook Live. I have a question for you to interact with today to get started in the comment box. If you have uh, one skill, good morning. I can never tell, still can't tell. There's a little loop between uh, when we get started. But good morning, Facebook Live. I have a question I want to start with today. If you have one specific skill that is more developed, uh, maybe you're proud of this skill, um, or you've spent more time practicing that than any other thing, I want you to share it with me in the comment box today. Uh, it's kind of our theme today. Maybe you've just spent more time doing it than most other people. You think, you know what, I'm probably better than most people at X. It could be, um, you know, reading. I read tons. Uh, it could be knitting. It can be playing an instrument. Uh, it can be a sport, uh, a game. I'm going to use chess as an example today. Um, uh, maybe you're just a great driver, but what is it that you are um, likely more skilled at than other people because you've either done more practice or had more preparation? Um, and just it can be just one word. And if you leave that in the comment box today, it'll make this a little more interesting for all of us, so we can read those. Uh, for me, it's likely I had to think about it a little bit. Um, I probably am more practiced than most people at public speaking. Um, I've been a pastor now for 13 years. Uh, I did some some numbers this morning. Uh, I think I've preached more than 500 messages at, at this church where I am. Good morning, Peggy. And But that still doesn't really even add up to about a thousand hours of actually speaking. Um, the preparation would probably be more, well more than that. So, um, so I tried to figure out something that I have done for um, 10,000 hours. I've been pastoring for this church for about 13 years now, which makes 650 weeks. So if, if we just figured on average that there was 40 hours in a week, um, and usually there's more than that, but if you did 650 weeks at 40 hours, that is 26,000 hours. Now, a pastor's skills are varied. That's not all public speaking, but I probably do more public speaking than most people. Um, but that was probably one of the one of the few things I probably read more uh, than most people. If reading can be considered a skill, um, but anyway, I'm interested in what your skills are. Go ahead and post those in the comments. We're interested in that. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jeff Elliott here from uh, New Horizons Fellowship in uh, New Haven, Indiana. Uh, I want to welcome all of you that join us. Appreciate you being out there. Got an interesting topic for us today. A little article I've. Uh, probably been several months ago when I started this thought, but saved it for today. Um, I want to give you a few announcements before that. We are uh, gearing up for our board met last night. We are gearing up for a back to school event um, here at the church. Um, not quite sure what it's going to look like, but we know we need to get in get in gear about collecting school supplies. So we're doing that, uh, and this is serving as a reminder. If you want to support. Um, mostly the school district where we are. Uh, that's where most of our people come from. But we're collecting um, papers, folders, markers, pencils, erasers, glue stick, all those sorts of things that kids always need when we start school. Um, so whether they're going to be schooling at home or whether they're going to be going into a building together with other classmates, uh, they are going to need supplies, so we're going to help them out with that. We've been doing this for oh, a few years now. Um, and we're still working out whether, whether it'll be a drive through whether people will walk through the building or whatever it's going to be. But we appreciate, uh, if you want to make donations here at the church, you can contact me on Facebook. You can let us know when you can stop by and drop stuff off. Um, anyway, so I want to let you know about that, uh, and you can support uh, our, our local school district here as well. So this coming Sunday, um, we are, once again, we're still delayed on obtaining the video camera that's been ordered for weeks now uh, so it'll be um, this it looks the quality is good as long as I'm sitting here but when we go into our fellowship hall it's not as good the lighting is a little different um, and we're still waiting for a really good quality video camera but this Sunday will be the same as last Sunday we are meeting in person have been for a number of weeks now you're more than welcome to join us at 10 15 uh, but our our Facebook live service starts at 10 30 uh, and I'm going to go run some audio tests immediately when I'm done here because uh, as I went back and watched Sunday, that's when we sing, it's just kind of blasting. So I'm going to try some different settings on the mic and hopefully that will be better for us for Sunday. Uh, but this Sunday we are back in the study of the heart of a king, uh, still the life of Saul. 
mostly First Samuel chapter 13. Um, 14 is kind of included, but maybe just a couple verses towards the end there. So if you wanted to, to be prepared for that, that's First Samuel 13. Uh, got some breaking news uh, this morning. Uh, a truck carrying two pays crashed on the highway, spilling everything, and uh, police are combing the area. Um, there you go. See, I slipped in jokes on you. I'm going to start trying to just get these in there so you're not even paying attention. Uh, my friend and I just started a business where we weigh tiny objects. It's a small-scale operation. Uh, see, there's another one. You didn't even see it coming, did you? You thought I was on to a new topic about uh, a new business. But uh, I was also really mad at my, my friend Mark for stealing my dictionary. I said, Mark my words. See, there's another one. Uh, finally, this morning, the last joke. If I if I had fifty cents for every math exam I failed, I'd have six dollars and thirty cents. And for those of you who are really poor at math, uh, it's impossible to end up with thirty cents if I got fifty cents for every math exam. Uh, hopefully, you got that. Anyway, uh, sometimes these jokes look really good on paper, um, uh, and I hope they make you laugh because I certainly get a kick out of them. That's the only reason I bring them here. So. Anyway, back to our topic today. Uh, I want to ask if you've ever heard of, this is why I started with our open this morning, what skill do you think uh, it's likely that you would have uh, that most that would be more developed, good morning Margaret, that would be more developed than other people's skills, things that you've spent more time doing than most people? Um, and I asked the question because it's based on uh, a, a, a principle I heard years ago called the 10,000 hour rule. So I did some research and I went back to the source to find out where this came from. Um, and it's basically from a, a study from you know many years ago, but also an, an article of, of recent days. And I say recent because I, I don't really know remember the exact date, but certainly this person is alive today. So, um, but I want to read this uh, part of an article, um, and I'll s I'll send you the the link or put it in the comments. It's from the New Yorker. Uh, by a guy named Malcolm Gladwell, who you may or may not be familiar with, but he's got a fascinating podcast of his own. Uh, but this was from an article he also wrote for the New Yorker magazine, and this is part of the article that he wrote. It says, 40 years ago, um, in a paper, an American scientist, Herbert Simon and William Chase, drew one of the most famous conclusions in the study of expertise. Um, there are no instant experts in chess. Certainly no instant masters or grandmasters. There appears not to be on record any case, including Bobby Fischer, where a person reached grandmaster level with less than about a decade's intense preoccupation with the game. And I, I want to read that part again because that's crucial to where we're going to go today. Uh, they, just studied, they studied chess and said there's no person on record who has become a grandmaster level chess player with less than a decade of intense preoccupation with the game. They continue on, we would estimate very roughly that a master has spent perhaps 10,000 to 50,000 hours staring at chess positions. In the years that followed, an entire field within psychology grew up devoted to elaborating on Simon and Chase's observation. And researchers, time and again, reached the same conclusion. It takes a lot of practice to be good at complex tasks. And I wonder how much money we spent to discover that, right? Uh, but anyway, after their paper, uh, for example, the psychologist John Hayes looked at 76 famous classical composers and found that in almost every case, those composers did not create their greatest work until they had been composing for at least 10 years. Um, there's a couple exceptions, Shostakovich and Paganini, who took nine years, and another guy who I've never heard of, Eric Satie, who took eight. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But anyway, I'm still quoting from this, this article. This is the scholar, and now Malcolm speaks for himself, this is the scholarly tradition I was referring to in my book, Outliers, when I wrote about the 10,000 hour rule. No one succeeds at a high level without innate talent. I wrote, achievement is talent plus preparation. But the 10,000 hour research reminds us that the closer psychologists look at the careers of the gifted, the smaller the role um, innate talent seems to play, and the bigger the role preparation seems to play. So I wanted to, uh, to if you've never heard of that idea, I wanted to bring it up to you. You've likely heard that. that 10, it takes 10,000 hours to, come, to become proficient at anything. Uh, so then the article then goes on to debate about 
uh, sometimes luck plays a role or circumstances favor an individual becoming good at something, uh, maybe a natural ability, and they talk about that as well. Uh, and then they tried to find some areas that that 10,000 hour rule did not apply, you know, as in um, some naturally gifted athletes. Um, I think they talked about darts, some things like that. Um, I don't know if you can actually, I, I'm assuming there probably are people that are really good at darts because of practice, but uh, it just seems kind of random. I'm going to have to turn that off. I'll be back in a second. Sorry about that. It's probably one of our, you know, one of our many fans calling into the show we have here. Uh, anyway, so back to the 10,000 hour rule. The article that I was reading concludes with this. If the surgeon who wants to fuse your spinal cord did some newfangled online accelerated residency, you should probably tell him no. <laughs> it does not invalidate the 10,000 hour principle, however, to point out that in instances where there are not a long list of situations and scenarios and possibilities to master, like jumping really high or running as fast as you can in a straight line or directing a sharp object at a large round piece of cork, expertise can be attained a whole lot more quickly, right? He's just listening. There's a few things that matter, but in general, the principle still applies. So he says, what Simon and Chase wrote 40 years ago remains true today. In cognitively demanding fields, there are no naturals. Um, I've thought about this concept often and thought if there was something I could devote 10,000 hours to, and I'm going to give you some numbers in a second, it is a, a lot of hours, um, and that, that number has been debated, and I think we can safely say this, um, if you gave 10,000 hours to something, you would very much likely be better than you were before the 10,000 hours. Uh, now, you may not be better than somebody who has natural ability in less than 10,000 hours, but you would be, at least be better than you were. Um, so here's where I'm going to spin this for us today. I want to suggest today that we think about prayer in this way. Um, I wish I could have said in the open that I felt like I was a better prayer than most people. Um, but also, like most people, I feel that I am inadequate or inefficient or ineffective in that. And um, I know many other people lament that they just don't feel like they're good at it. Um, and most of us still struggle with prayer in the same way. Uh, you know, uh, um, time, we don't feel we give enough time to prayer, or we lose focus, uh, we lose our commitment to prayer, our passion, uh, and we just feel ineffective in prayers. And we read passages in scriptures where Jesus would pray all night. Luke chapter 6, verse 12, it says that, and some other places as well. Um, Acts 1.14 talks about people devoting themselves to prayer. And the word devote there means to persist, to keep on with devotion, to be faithful. Uh, and as I thought through this topic today, uh, of course the verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that we all know as pray without ceasing, I think is the way the King James says it. And I thought, I would just really briefly look at what do other versions describe this phrase, pray without ceasing. And they say things like this, pray continually, pray all the time, never stop praying, Pray constantly. Okay, that's just different translations of 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray at all times in the Spirit. Stay alert with all perseverance and intercession. The message says, Pray hard and long on Ephesians 6.18. Uh, Colossians 4.2, Continue steadfastly in prayer. Other versions, Devote yourselves to prayer. So I wanted to challenge us today and help us to think through some things. If we talk about a 10,000 hour rule to make us really proficient, it's not a surprise that we wouldn't be really confident in our prayer skills if we haven't put in the time, right? So I want to break down some numbers for us. If we were to commit ourselves to giving 10,000 hours to prayer to become an expert, if we were to be a professional prayer at 10,000 hours, um, if we were to pray uh, 10 minutes a day, all right, it would take us to, to reach 10,000 hours of prayer at 10 minutes a day would take 164 years. Um, so we're already realizing that, okay, this is going to take a long time. However, just think about it, that's just 10 minutes a day, which is not a lot. You can't, but think, let's say if you wanted to become a piano player and you only practice 10 minutes a day, it's going to take you 164 years to get good only practicing for 10 minutes. So what happens if we double our prayer time to 20 minutes a day, right? So then if we did that, if we prayed 20 minutes a day to get to 10,000 hours of prayer, to feel proficient at it, to feel good at it, it would take 82 years, right? We just half 
the years that we had before. Um, um, so that's still, that's, that's a lifetime's worth of prayer, right? It, at 20 minutes a day. So if we did a half hour or an hour segment, what is the math on that? If we prayed for 30 minutes a day, it takes about 55 years to reach that 10,000 hours. If we prayed 40 minutes a day, it takes about 41 years to reach 10,000 hours. And the last one I did was if we prayed one hour a day, it takes more than 27 years of praying one hour a day to be considered a really good prayer, at least according to the 10,000 hour rule. So let's think about that. How many of us, probably very, very few, pray for one hour a day? Uh, and for us to be confident in it, it would take 27 years of praying one hour a day to do that. So it's no wonder that we don't feel that confident and that encouraged. So I wanted to to speak to you today to challenge your prayer life. To let, Just think through the numbers. Let's just look at what the math says about that. It's not a surprise that we don't feel confident in our prayer. We are um, a people who we talk about prayer quite a bit, but we often, we fail to do it. We feel terrible about not doing it more. We don't feel that we do it well. It's because we just don't have a lot of practice in. Uh, we live in a country that needs a great deal of prayer right now. So, And I wanted to, us to to move forward in that as well. That What if we recommitted ourselves to prayer? What if all of the good intentions in the world and all the protests and all the activism uh, and all the hours spent online were preceded by prayer? What if in our off hours, instead of being consumed with media and entertainment, we were consumed with time with God and an opportunity to pray? So I want to you know, give you some, some little tools uh, today, just a few. Use your online time for a good purpose. Maybe you're a huge YouTube person. Um, I've, there are tons and tons of uh, YouTube videos that have prayer guides uh, and meditation and music and uh, some have verses on the screen. Some can be focused on a certain aspect of prayer. Uh, and I want to encourage you to use those. Uh, and I'll, like I say, I'll send you some in the links today. I'll, I'll give you one or two because um, then it'll give you a whole list of other things. If you like that one, you might like this. You know how it works. Um, so I wanted to challenge us with that idea today. I can remember as a as a younger person, might, be, might have been a kid at the time, hearing a pastor or uh, someone when I was growing up in church say, let's go to prayer. Um, and it sounds kind of odd to the ear, even as a kid and still even now, um, but I like the intent behind it. I like the drive behind it. There is there is force. There is trust and power. You know, it almost was like we're going to change this thing, so let's go to prayer. Um, in First Peter chapter three, uh, he's quoting Psalm thirty four here. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer." So let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you this morning for those who have joined us. We all acknowledge um, and admit our our own failures when it comes to prayer. We feel so inadequate and unprofessional. Uh, but when we think about it in context of the nature of human activity and the, the amount of time that is required to be good at something, we realize that we just haven't put the time in. Um, Lord, I pray that those who join me in, in prayer today, uh, that you speak to them in a new, uh, exciting way about the power of prayer. Uh, may we begin to... Um, expand and reach to new horizons in our prayer life. Now, it may not become the same um, stale reciting of words, the things that we say all the time, uh, but realize that you want to meet us in that place uh, and pray that we would take advantage of the tools that are out there. God, we pray that your spirit would be present in our prayer times, that they would become such a um, a, a sweet thing to us that it's something that we desire to do. Maybe we, we want to turn the TV off or get offline and, and just sit in a in a quiet place or out so, outside wherever it may be to pray and meet with you. Lord, develop that passion in us as we commit the time. Um, we are asking for you to intercede in uh, world events and the events of, uh, of our cities and states and country, um, not just in the area of the pandemic, but with the dealing with the areas of racism and protests and all the things that that consume our hearts and minds may we be able 
to take those fears and those worries and bring them to you and trust that you're going to do something in those. Um, and maybe we leave those moments of prayer uh, with renewed hope and energy and excitement uh, about seeing your hand moving. Uh, we do thank you for the many, many opportunities that have been um, taken advantage of as we've gone online. And more, I know many, many other churches have as well and, and are probably reaching people that we've never reached before. We pray um, that you would minister to them in ways that they may never have experienced before. Can we maybe help us to be an encouragement to each other uh, and to all those who are in need, to any that we can lift up, help us to do that uh, through courage and commitment um, and, and personal sacrifice as well. Uh, we thank you for this day. May we be a blessing to you and bring honor and glory to your name. Uh, and I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, I wanted to... Uh, I'm going to give you that prayer guide, but one of the things that I wanted to do today was to play some prayerful music in the background as a sample of what I've been talking about. Um, but there's a chance that it would be flagged by YouTube and Facebook and they would take it down or mute it or something. Uh, so I'm going to, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you some of those links today, the music that I use in the background when I'm praying and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to post them in the comments and get you started. So thanks for being there today. Um, God bless. Uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll plan to see you, uh, if not on Sunday, at 10.30. Um, uh, love to see you in person at 10.15, um, but also the plan is to be back next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So God bless, have a great day, uh, and a great weekend.